Good evening and welcome to another evangelistic service. To our online audience, we're happy that you joined us and we pray that something that will be said and done in the service will be a blessing to each and every one. Let us stand as we acknowledge the presence of the Lord in our service. I'll call on Sister Kathy McLaughlin to open the service in prayer. I'm going to ask you to remain standing for our congregation song, which will be page 316 from our redemption. Give him the glory. Sister Kathy. Glory to the almighty God who sits in the heaven and look down on his trusting children. O oh, heavenly Father, we thank you, almighty God, that once again, dear Father, we can come before the throne of grace, dear Lord, giving you thanks, dear God, and praising you, honoring you, dear God, because you're worthy to be praised, dear Lord. It is only through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, dear God, our divine Savior, that we have this privilege, dear God, and we thank you, dear Father, for your mercies that have extended unto man. O oh, Almighty God, as we are in this service tonight, dear Lord, we know, dear God, that we cannot do anything of ourselves, dear Father, and we need your Holy Spirit, dear God, to take over, dear Lord, and take charge of this service, dear Father. Whatever items will be rendered in this service tonight, dear God, I pray, dear Lord, that it will be done to your honor, to your praise, and to your glory, and that self may be sl slain, dear Father, and that you will be lifted up, dear God, and it will go up to you, dear God, as a sweet incense in your nostril, dear Lord, because we know in doing so, dear God, that your blessing will come down on us, dear Father. So, Almighty God, may you have your way in this service tonight, dear Father, and we pray, dear God, that whatever is said, dear Lord, may go forth as a two-edged sword, dear Lord, accomplishing what it may, dear Father. And we pray, dear God, that every plan of the devil, dear Lord, will be rendered powerless, dear Father, that we, the hearers, dear Lord, may receive the word with gladness, dear Lord. So bless each one now, dear Father. Bless every item, dear God. Give us, dear Lord, all we need, dear Father, to work for you in spirit and in truth. Remember the chairperson of the hour, dear God. Bless Sister Karen, dear Lord, and whatever she have planned, dear Lord. And whoever is bringing the word, I pray, dear God, that they may open their mouth, dear Lord, as an oracle unto you, dear God. So bless us, dear Lord. Give your angel charge over us. For those that are on their way, dear God, we pray that you may hasten their step, dear Lord. Bring them safely and be with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And we're 316 out of our redemption. Give him the glory. It was done.
Praise the Lord for that wonderful story. We we'll now do a responsive reading, taken from the back of the hymnal, page 466, number 36, God's Greatness and Glory, and Sister Miriam will lead us. Good night, church. God's Greatness and Glory, page 466, number 36. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. In them has he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. This is the word of the Lord. We'll go right into our special singing, and we'll start with a solo by Brother Shaw, Oh, How He Loves Me. me 
loves me. I have a friend, a precious friend. He loves each and every one of us, and his love will never end. Thank you, Brother Shaw. We'll now have a solo by Sister Bev, and that's entitled, I Once Was Far Away From the Savior. I was once far away from the Savior, and as vile as a sinner could be, and I was
for the light is now shining on me. And now on to others I'm telling how we say a poor sinner. once far away from the Savior in darkness. What a difference the light of Christ made in our lives. Thank you, Sister Bell. We'll now have a solo by Sister Tasha and Sue, um, Mercy Rewrote My Life, and that will be followed by another solo by Brother O'Leary, Safe in the Arms of Jesus. Sister Tasha. This was supposed to be a duet. But now it's a solo. <laughs> Please remember my mom, she's not feeling well tonight. <clears throat> mistakes God turned into me
right, church. <laughs> Safe in the arms of Jesus. Safe on his gentle breast. There by his love. Sweetly my soul shall rest. Hark this the voice of angel morning a song to me over the fields of glory over the jasper sea safe in the arms of Jesus safe on his gentle breast there by his love Sweetly my soul shall rest Safe in the arms of Jesus Safe on garden care Safe from the world's temptation Sing cannot harm me there free from the blights of sorrow free from my doubts and fear only a few more trials a few more tears. Jesus, my heart, dear refuge, Jesus has died for me. Form in the rock of Safe in the arms of Jesus, safe on his gentle breast, safe by his love or shame. Sweetly my soul shall rest. Hark is the voice of angel, morning a song to me. Over the fields of glory, over the jasper sea, safe in the Sing and not harm. 
safe in the arms of Jesus. No better arms to be in. Thank you for that selection. And Sister Tasha Sue, mercy we wrote all of our lives. The past has been forgiven. Thank God for that wonderful thing. We'll now pause to take our prayer requests and to have our announcements. Do we have any prayer requests on this side? Okay. On this side? And let's continue to remember Brother Denver, Sister Shelda, and any of the other brethren that are not feeling well. And our government, yes. Can't forget those. And Sister Rosa. A lot of her things are not feeling well. So let's bear them up not only tonight, but in our personal prayer to remember all of them. Sister Ganita, I'm going to ask you to come and pray for the requests and remember the offering and the messenger of the night. We'll be sitting after this for a while, so let us stand. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. He knows all of our needs and he's already ahead of us told us to just ask and believe, and that's what we're going to do now is to bring all of these requests to the throne of grace. We just heard that mercy rewrote our lives, and it can do so much the same for so many others. Let us pray. Almighty God, we just want to pause to acknowledge you to the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we're here to give you thanks for your mercies and your blessings yet another day, for indeed you have been good to us, and we thank you. Lord, we're here because we are in need of help. We are in need of you, dear God. And we thank you that you are always there for us. You are, you are available whenever we call. Lord, we are praying for the much needs and requests that have gone forth. Lord, but before we even ask, you knew. But we are, you told us to ask, so we are obeying you, Lord, and we are asking. Amen. There are many that are sick in bodies, dear Father, that needs a divine touch. My God, touch like you never touched before. Heal, Lord, and we'll have testimonies, O oh God, of your goodness towards each one. Father, those that are traveling, we ask for traveling mercies. Those that are having surgeries, those that are all the procedures, whatever the unspoken requests, whatever the needs are, you already know. And we are asked to grant every need and request according to your will for what is best for us, dear Lord, we pray. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for what you've done for us so far in this service. Lord, we ask that you continue to abide with us. As this Rebecca comes to bring the word, dear God, we thank you for this woman, dear Father, woman of God, one who allows you, dear God, and who praises you and worships you, dear God. We're asking that you put your hand upon her now, O oh God. Lord, touch her in a mighty way, in her body, in her mind, her spirit, everything that she's need, Lord. We ask that you fill her up right now, dear God. Give her that she can speak, O oh God, as an oracle of you tonight, Lord. That some word, something that she says, Lord, from you will go and lodge in the hearts of some soul. Lord, if there's anyone that is outside the full, Lord, and re relies, O oh God, that they need a few that they'll come home tonight, Lord. We will rejoice with the angels in heaven for what you're going to do for them, Lord. Lord, we know that you are the God who made the heavens and the earth. And you know the weather and everything else, dear God. Lord, you see this depending weather that is coming upon us, dear God. Lord, you have the mighty hand to cease the winds and the waves, O oh God. So we're asking you to blow your breath, O oh God, and move it away, O oh God, into the ocean. It will be in no danger to anyone, dear Father. Protect us all, dear God, from this, Lord. We're not going to fail to thank you, O oh God, for we know that you are so good towards us. Lord, we pray a special prayer tonight for our pastor. Lord, he needs a divine touch, dear God. Reach down in mercy and touch, oh God. Touch a divine that you never touched before, Lord. 
Raise him up, O oh God, O oh God, from this affliction, dear God, and that he too will have a great testimony. Lord, continue to abide with us in the rest of the service. Have thine own way now, we pray. These things we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Just a reminder that our offering boxes are on the wall at the beginning, at the entrance of the door on the two side here. If you have not done so already and would like to put in an offering, please know that everything that you put in will be used for the furtherance of God's work. The announcements for the week. On Wednesday night, we have a young people service. On Saturday at 5.30, we have a prayer meeting at 5.30. And on Sundays, our regular service and school at 9.45, morning worship at 11. And once again, our evangelistic service at 7 with choruses at 6.45. Our last two selections um, will be um, the Honduran group singing a song for us, and then the choir will close out, Living for Jesus, Oh What Peace. So if we can have the Honduran group, please. In shade a green pasture, so rich and so sweet, God lead is their children along. Where the water cold flows in, the weary ones feet, God lead is their children. Ah! 
We want to thank the group and the choir for those two beautiful selections. It now comes for the time for the word of God. I'm asking you to give Sister Rebecca your full attention and your support as she brings to us what the Lord has laid on her heart. Sister Rebecca. Good evening, everyone. You know, I really crave your prayers because I'm not used to being here on a Sunday night. You know, so many times Brother Ray will say he's not sure he'll ever get used to it. And I'm not sure if I'll be here and get used to being here on a Sunday night either. But I say to myself, it's the same people in the same location doesn't matter whether it's Wednesday night or Sunday night, it's sharing the word of God. And tonight, that is what I aim to do with the help of God. And I'm sure by now you all know I don't preach. But I will share what God has laid on my heart. I was very encouraged by the song service because so many of the songs just tied in with what I want to bring to you tonight, and that's repentance. I'm going to start with a very familiar scripture, and it's 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1, and we're going to read from verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we, have, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father, we thank you for your word because it has been given to us for us to live by. And I ask you, Lord, that you will help me to share this word the way you want it to be shared and that whatever I say will come from you, and that it will touch some soul tonight. We pray in Christ's sake, amen. amen. My topic tonight, if I have a topic, is repentance or remorse. And there's a difference. To repent is to be genuinely sorry for the sins you have forgiven, for you have committed, and ask God's forgiveness. But it doesn't stop right there. You have to have the desire to change and not sin again. Amen. When we repent, we don't repent with the intention of repeating the sin. And if we do, we do have an advocate. You know, you talk to people sometime and they say, you try to tell them their need of God and they say, Oh, I ask him to forgive me every night. And I say, suppose you die in the day. What, what's going to happen then? You know, I, I just think that's sacrilege. Because God is a spirit, and we must worship him in spirit and in truth. And to me, that's showing total disrespect for God if we think, oh, every night we can just say, Lord, forgive me with no intention of stopping. We're going to repeat the same sins tomorrow, and tomorrow night I'll ask him to forgive me. That's not how it works, no. It's genuinely sorry, and asking him to keep you from doing it again. Now, to, re to be remorseful is usually 
you're sorry because you got caught. And our Bible, and we all say, this Bible is full of so many examples of everything we need in life, especially how to live and how to live for God. And you are aware that I am very much love my Old Testament. So most of my examples are going to come from the Old Testament, and we're going to talk about some people that were repentant. Now we all know about David. Yeah. Don't have to repeat about David tonight. You know, David sinned bitterly, bitterly, but God forgave him because he was penitent and he was sorrowful and he asked God to restore him. Just read Psalm 51 and you see how much he wanted God to forgive him, to restore him, to give him a clean heart. He even said, wash me with hyssop, everything. Do everything, Lord, to make me clean again. Amen. That was true repentance. Yes. But there's a little king I want to bring to your attention tonight. And I'm going to read a verse or two, actually one verse, from 1 Kings 13 and verse 2. 1 Kings 13 and verse 2. Now, for those of you who read the Old Testament, we know that the majority of the kings of Israel and Judah were wicked. There were like 69 kings and only five good ones. This one that I'm going to talk to you about briefly, God gave a prophecy to King Jeroboam. King Jeroboam was a very, very wicked king. He led Israel astray. Now, what we need to remember too, in the Old Testament, repentance is different, was different than repentance today. Today, we can go to God ourselves. Yeah. We don't need a priest. We don't need anybody. <clears throat> but back in the Old Testament, when you sinned, you had to go to the priest, confess your sin, bring a sin offering. He would make a sacrifice, and you would be forgiven. Thank God we don't have to do that today. And what Jeroboam did... Jeroboam said to his people, you don't have to go to Jerusalem to worship. We're going to make everything out here that we need. So he built little groves and he made images and he said, these are your gods. So you're going to worship right here. Now you know God was not pleased and eventually God took him out. But before he did, he gave him a message and it says, and behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord, behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name. And upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. Now we look to Second Chronicles 34. 362 years later, after that prophecy was made, Josiah was born. In 2 Chronicles 34, and starting at verse 1, Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign. He was a little boy. And he reigned in Jerusalem one and thirty years. And he did that which was right in the sight of God, and walked in the ways of David his father, and declined neither to the right hand 
nor to the left. For in the eighth year of his reign, so he was now 16, while he was yet young, he began to seek after the God of David his father. And in the twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem from the high places and the groves and the carved images and the molten images. And they break down the altars of Balaam in his presence and the images that were on high above them. He cut down and the groves and the carved images and the molten images he break in pieces. But look at verse 5. And he burnt the bones of the priests upon their altars. These were the priests 362 years before that had been offering sacrifice to their gods. He dug them up. He dug the bones up. And he burnt them and he spread the ashes. He was doing a cleansing. He was letting the people know we have to repent from the sins of our fathers and we need to serve God. And in the 18th ver eighth verse it says, now in the 18th year of his reign, when he had purged the land, he sent Safan, the son of Azaliah, and Messiah, the governor of the city, to repair the house of the Lord. And we're going to move over to verse 14. And when they brought the money that was brought into the house of the Lord, Helkiah the priest found a book of the law of the Lord given by Moses. That was the Ten Commandments and all the laws. Even though he did not have those laws at that time, God used him. God was speaking to him through his heart to do that which was right in the sight of the Lord. And it, verse 19 says, And it came to pass when the king heard the words of the Lord that he rent his clothes and he commanded Helkiah and Hayakam, the son of Saphan, Abdon, the son of Micah, Shaphan, the scribe, go inquire of the Lord for me and for them that are left in Israel. And verse 29 says, Then the king sent and gathered together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of the Lord, and all the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and the priests and the Levites, and all the people great and small. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant that was found in the house of the Lord. And that book probably took half day to read. And if we stand up here for our people start leaving. And the king stood in his place and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord, to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and with all his soul to perform the words of the covenant which were written in the book. And Josiah took away all the abominations out of the countries that pertained to the children of Israel. And all his days, they departed not from following the God of their fathers. That was true repentance. Amen. He realized that his forefathers had sinned and young as he was, God had used him to clean the land up and to bring the people back to worship God. In Luke 15, we also have a very familiar story about the prodigal son. In fact, we touched on him this morning. Repentance. When the prodigal son found himself in a pig pen, the Bible says he came to himself yeah. and he left. You know, when the Holy Spirit convicts some people, they don't move. They stay right there. And God, 
I tell people all the time, and I'm sure most of you have heard this, conviction is a blessing. Because until you are convicted of your sin by the Holy Spirit, then you are not going to repent. So conviction is a blessing. And when you're convicted, come out of the pig pen. Don't just sit there. God is saying to you, I am willing to forgive you. I want to forgive you. I want you to become my child. Come home. And thank God, the prodigal son came out and went home and was welcomed by his father who threw a party for him and there was great rejoicing. And the Bible says there's great rejoicing in heaven over one sinner, one, just one. So imagine if you have a crowd, there's big rejoicing in heaven. Another example of repentance is Peter. <laughs> you know, we had a, I had this message prepared weeks ago and this morning Sunday school lesson was on Peter and we all know Peter thought he was strong. Peter thought, Lord, I am going to follow you. I am going to die with you. You don't worry. I am going to be right here. Well, I will give Peter a little credit because when all the rest left, he stayed. Not right close, but he stayed close enough to see what was going on. And even though he had said, Lord, though all men forsake you, I am willing to die for you. And three times he said, me? I don't know the man. But I love the verse that says, he went out and wept bitterly. Bitterly. He was repentant. And we know how God used Peter. When Peter became full of the Holy Spirit, Peter became a force to be reckoned with. You know, you know Jesus picked 12 people that most of us probably would not have kept company. And four of them were fishermen. And Brother Ray and I were talking about it after church. And the, you know, fishermen are known for cursing. It seems like that's part of their trademark. So I can just imagine Peter used to be one of those. But when God turned him around, let me tell you, he became a force. And I encourage you all the time, read his sermon in Acts 2. You will not believe. In fact, the crowd didn't believe. They said, wait, these are unlearned men from Galilee. But when God gets hold of you and he puts the words in your heart and your mouth, everybody will be surprised. And that's the life we are supposed to live when we are children of God. Once we have repented and been forgiven, and filled with the Holy Spirit, God just boosts us up and help us to live for him. And our job is to go ye and share. And you don't have to go to Africa or China. You can go to your next door neighbor. So we do have examples of people in the Bible who were repentant, ask God to forgive them, and he did. But there are two people I'm going to bring to your attention. They weren't repentant. They were remorseful. In Joshua 7, we have a story of a man called Achan. And we all know that story of Achan. God gave the children of Israel very, very straight instructions. You know, when God speaks to us, we don't have to doubt. He's very clear. He's very clear on what he wants us to do. And he, he gave them very, very strong instructions. Destroy the people. Do not take anything. The only thing you are to take out of there is Rehab, 
and her family. What did Achan do? Achan took something he shouldn't have taken. Now, he hid it. And after this victory, they were going to go up to Ai. And they went up to Ai. And they looked around, and they came back, and they said to Joshua, listen, we don't need to send the whole army. We just need to send a couple of people up there, you know? And the Bible said they sent 3,000. Now, to me, that's plenty of people, but I guess in a war, that's not plenty of people. But they were so confident because of the, you know, in, they had won Jericho so easily with God's help. And now they felt, oh, this is a little bit of people. We can conquer them. Well, in Joshua 7, it tells us that AI overcame them. And in fact, 36 men lost their lives. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until evening tide. He and the elders of Israel and put dust upon their heads. Now this was a sign they used when they were mourning. Or when they were repentant, they would rent their clothes. Because Joshua said, Alas, O Lord, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan. And the Lord said to Joshua, Get thee up. Israel hath sinned, have transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them, because they have even taken of the accursed thing and have stolen, that's verse 11, sorry, and they have put it even among their own stuff. And we know that they cast lots, and Achan was chosen. And Joshua said unto Achan, verse 19, My son, give I pray thee glory to the Lord of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. When I saw the spoils, a, godly, a goodly Babylonish garment, 200 shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight. I coveted them. Covetousness will get you in trouble every time. And took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent. Now, Achan and his family were severely punished. And in our minds, we say, but he confessed. Not really. He kept it all night. He hid it. He had no intention of confessing. He only confessed because he got caught. Yes, and he says, I have sinned against the Lord. But it was too late. He should have confessed willingly. In fact, he shouldn't have taken it. He had already disobeyed. And if, I am sure if he had, during the night, if his conscience had bothered him, you know, and it probably did, and he had come to Joshua and said, listen, I have disobeyed God. And I am really, really sorry. I took something that I should not have taken. I feel that God would have forgiven him. But he didn't. He only confessed when he got caught. And he suffered for it. You know, I want to encourage all of us. If you're here tonight and you have a hidden sin, you need to confess it to God before it is too late. And the last person I want to bring to your attention was Saul. 
in 1 Samuel 15. Again, God has given very, very specific instructions. You're going to battle. You are to kill everybody. And yes, that's a different subject because people argue all the time and say, how can a God of love do that? We have to accept that God is God. And there's a verse in Isaiah that says, I am God, who can tell me what to do? So these were his instructions. Kill everyone. And they did. And again, this is a story we know very well. And Samuel goes down and he says, wait, I hear the bleating of sheep. What's this? And Samuel was quick. In verse 21, he says, but the people, he was quick to pass blame. You are the king. It is your responsibility to lead the people. It is your responsibility to do what God said. But right away, you are going to blame the people. But the people took up the spoil, sheep and oxen, the sheep of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice. God did not do for any sacrifice. He said, destroy everything. And Samuel said, hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of lamb. When we disobey and make excuses for our disobedience, God is not going to honor that. He can't. He gave us specific instructions and he expects us to obey. So we have these examples. What, what about us here that are living in this time and this generation? Our biggest hindrance to repentance is self. In Proverbs 28, 13, it says, he that covers his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesses and forsakes not every night, Lord, forgive me, and every morning repeat the same thing. And for sakes, them shall have mercy. Confess and forsake. And like First John said, and if you sin and fall, you repent, and he, rise, he will raise you back up, and you can continue your walk with him. You know, in Bible times, People express sorrow by tearing their clothes. We don't have to do that today. In fact, Joel said, rent your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. God wants all of us to come to him, every one of us. It doesn't matter what sins you have committed. You hear that all the time. There is no sin except the sin of blasphemy that God will not forgive. So whatever you have done recently, in the past, long time ago that nobody knows about, God can forgive. Amen. God is willing to forgive. Yeah. It is only for us to come to him. And tonight I want to say, if you are not safe in the arms of Jesus, as Brother O'Leary sang, then tonight is an opportunity for you to get there. Amen. May God bless you. Amen. Well, that's a good reminder that if and whatever we've done, first of all, God knows it anyway. We have to realize that that God knows it. Quite often though, he's not gonna remind us of it. He wants us to remind ourselves to ask him to forgive us of whatever we've done. God is there to help and to strengthen. And I, you hear Brother Rissi all the time, every bucket will get up. 
But when you continuously buck your toe on the same rock, then move the rock. Something is wrong. Ask the Lord to help. Every single one of us have a weakness. Yes, yeah, church, everyone. Shake your head like this. Everyone. Ask the Lord to help us strength, strengthen that weakness that we have. And he will. He'll give us the strength we need to go beyond that weakness that we have. We thank us, Rebecca, for those timely words. And, and <laughs> like I mentioned this morning, that there is a sample, an example of every single thing we need in, in, in God's word. We just got to take our time. There's nothing new under the face of the earth. Nothing. Nothing new under the sun. Everything has been repeat, uh, repeated. Let us stand, please. Lord, take the first place in my heart, number 147. Um, and unless, if, if you feel that you need the Lord and you want to ask the Lord to get you, for you to become closer to him, forgive you for your sin, whatever your need is. The wonderful thing about God, whatever your need is, great or small, small or great, he's here to help. And there's no better place for you to acknowledge God but in his house. I yield to thee, Savior forsaking my all from sinful things. For, so the cross says, oh, take the first place. You know, if God is the first place, then there's nothing else to take his place. The biggest problem is, is that quite often we put God one side and God not always first place in our life. That's the problem. Let us sing. Take the first place. Is everybody okay? Are we close enough to God? Unsaved friends. If you're not right with God tonight, tonight is the right place. The Lord will help you get stronger in Him. From thee will never depart. Come to thee now. Now is a good time. I will confess. That's all it takes, my friend. And take the first place.
before we sing the last verse, church, you know, quite often we wonder what others will say, what the others will think when we come to this altar. Let me tell you, that's between you and God. Nobody else. You, you come in and asking God to, sometimes you come just for strength. Asking God to draw, you, draw us closer. I, I keep using the word that this is the fuel station. When any part of your life is empty, this is where you come. You come to these altars and ask God to help you to, get, to gain strength, to get closer to Him. But quite often, selfish ways of thinking. We're not humble enough and too afraid of this and afraid of that. What's the magical word, Sister Georgia? Pride. Pride. The Lord loved a humble, humble person. Wherever we are, just ask the Lord to strengthen us. Each one was as strong than the body of Christ is strong. The stronger an individual is, the stronger the body is, collectively. Let us sing the last verse. We want to be quick to thank Sister Rebecca for that wonderful lesson that she presented to us. She says she's not a preacher, but we learn just as much or more from her teaching. Sister Rebecca, we really appreciate what you presented to us tonight. Yes. Okay. I'm I'm going to ask for the Horace if he would close the service in prayer for me. Eternally too late. Bless your people. 
Good night and God bless.